What's up? Welcome to Wine School. I'm Mike. With me as always, Eric. Tonight we got Aaron and Leslie with us. We're gonna drink some Barolo. Oh yeah. Nice. Good Sounds stuff. Good. All right. So tonight's Wine School brought to you by Newport Beach Pad. So if you're interested in checking out uh, a beach rental down in Newport Beach, look them up online. NewportBeachPad.com. All right. So tonight we're drinking a Barolo. So a little history on Barolo. Barolo, they call it the wine of kings and the king of wines. <laughs> it's, uh, there's a long and storied history behind Barolo, and it is one of the most celebrated types of wines um, out there for, for that particular grape, which is Nebbiolo. <laughs> and so Nebbiolo is a grape that is very temperamental. It's very hard to grow, and they've experimented with it all over the world but really, it only seems to grow well in Piedmont, Italy, which is this little tiny area sort of on the, the northwest corner of Italy, like tucked up against the Alps of the Pyrenees, you know, kind of, kind of right there. And for some reason, they can grow the Nebbiolo grape there wonderfully well and basically nowhere else in the world. Although, um, for those of you who, you guys know the band Tool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome band, right? So the, <laughs> so the lead singer of Tool, um, he opened up, uh, he's a big wine guy, and he opened up a winery in, or in uh, Arizona, kind of up in, up in the middle of Arizona in the, in the foothills, and he's experimenting with a bunch of really interesting grapes. I actually was there, I don't know, six months ago or so, and they had this one vineyard. They were growing 35 different varietals, in the, the one trying to find what grows in northern Arizona. Uh, and they, anyways, bottom line is they just released the Nebbiolo, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and I, I got, I have a bottle of it. I've been sitting on. Oh. Uh, it's a 2011 Nebbiolo, so I'm dying to see if they're able to make a go of it in Arizona. One of the problems with Nebbiolo is you got to age the hell out of it. It's almost undrinkable for the few first few years. And matter of fact, you can't even release it unless it's been aged for three years. And for a reserve, it's got to have been aged at least five. And most of the producers age it even more than that. That's per the uh, Italian DOCG rules that they have. Yeah, so remember in, in Italy they level the grapes by the wine by where it's made, not by the grape, right? So in Piedmont, they, they grow a lot of Nebbiolo in there, mm -hmm. and one of the towns is Barolo, another town is Barbaresco, another town is Gattinara, uh, and, and all of those, if you were to buy you know, a, a Nebbiolo from Gattinara, it would be labeled Gattinara. Gotcha. And, and the rules are to have that label, now you could age it for a year and call it red Italian table wine, uh -huh. but you wouldn't because Barolos are way, way, way you more expensive than right. Italian right. table wine. No, it's, you could sell it for way more. Right. So this is a 2007 uh, Pira Barolo Marenka. Um, and this is the current release. I mean, it's, it's been you know, aging in, in barrel for you know, five or six years. It, it's interesting, the, the old school um, Barolo, there's a big fight in Piedmont right now between the old school producers who would say, we've been making this wine for hundreds of years like this, don't mess with it, age it. And you have the new school people who are saying, yeah, but when you make that wine, you can't drink it for like 10 years. So like we kind of be interested in drinking our wine, I don't know, within a couple of years. So we're, <laughs> so we're going to use different Imagine technologies, <laughs> right? Go figure. Uh, in, in, it's fascinating the way that they grow and make the grapes. So Nebbiolo comes from the Italian word for fog, and it's yeah. ridiculously foggy there. Mm. And so hail is a constant threat. Oh. And so they have these cannons, and they, anytime it gets too, too cloudy out, they fire the cannons into the, into really? the clouds to break up the hail. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And in the old days, it was actual cannons, like, you know, Cannonballs, <laughs> um, and then they realized like we shouldn't just be shooting <laughs> cannons in the air. That's kind of a, that's kind of a bummer. So now they now they shoot air. They have these giant oh. air cannons, and boom, boom, boom. They does it really break up the hail? I don't know, uh, but it's it's kind of interesting to to know that there's Very. there's these guys shooting cannons in the air, and then you know filling up their big old barrels and aging wine for ten years, it's a good and job. then. <laughs> yeah, uh, so Nebbiolo, it, it's, a, it's a lighter colored wine. This wine's actually a little bit dark for Nebbiolo. Uh, a lot of times it's, it's, it's light like a Pinot almost. 
and um, sometimes you get a little bit of orangeness around around the rim, and I yeah, get a little bit of that orange orange hue here. That's actually when I do blind tastings. That's one of the things that I check if it's got that orange rim. It's hmm. leading me in that Barolo uh, Barolo style. Now, before we get into it, one of the things I will tell you: this is a fantastic food wine because it is one of the few wines in the world that is ridiculously high in acid and ridiculously high in tannin. Usually you get one or the other, right? You get a red wine that's really high in tannin, you get a white wine really high in acid. This is high in both, which makes it a wonderful wine to drink with fatty meats. Because the acid will just chew through the fat and the tannins will complement the shit out of the meat. Um, so, anyways, let's drink it. Cheers. For all. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I'm definitely getting the tan. I was gonna say, I see what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but really good. I mean, it dries it out, but then it it, it comes the it, the moisture comes back immediately. The tan or the acid kind of follows a, a, like a half a second behind the tan. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really interesting it's the way nice. it's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is making me crave some some steak right now. <laughs> yeah, the the Nebbiolos, the Barolos, the Barbarescos mm. are are literally these just magnificent wines. I'll tell you, in everybody's life, if you end up being a wino, you'll go back and you'll remember certain bottles of wine that were super impactful. And for me, one of them was a 1973 Gatinara, which is a Nebbiolo, and I drank it, it's probably 20 years ago, so 93 or 94, so it was maybe 20 years old when I, 20 years ago, and the wine was 20 years old <laughs> Wow. Um, when I drank it, and it was, it was just unbelievable. I remember that was one of the wines that made me go, whoa, maybe I shouldn't be drinking so much beer. <laughs> you know, maybe there's something in this wine right. thing after yeah. all. Okay. Um, definite, definitely magical. Okay, so that is Barola. And so I would definitely take, take a look out. Barolos tend to be really pricey. Yeah. Uh, like ridiculously expensive. But if you're interested in trying the Nebbiolo, you can go to the to Gatinara or Lang or just look for something from the Italian Piedmont region okay. that's a Nebbiolo grape hmm. and you'll get to experience that that sort of high acid high tannin without paying you know the extra money to make sure that it came from the zip code around the town of Barolo. Right. So is there a clear difference otherwise? There is actually yeah so so Barolo tends to be uh, a little bit bigger and hardier the Barbaresco is actually a little bit um, a little bit lighter a little bit fruitier and part of that's kind of where it's grown up against the mountains, the climate. Right, right. But they're all going to have this, that same sort of nebbiolo characteristics. Okay. So, uh, I think it's something enjoyable, and, and we'll see. Who knows, maybe uh, maybe Maynard Keenan will figure out how to grow it in Arizona, and we'll start right. having our nebbiolo in here. Yeah. It's, it's actually been this terror, because I've been like sitting on this bottle, and I know I, know I can't open it. <laughs> you know, it's a 2011, I can't open it until probably 2017 or something. I actually just made nebbiolo myself. You did. Yeah, so I have a, I haven't bottled it yet. It's 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 aging right now, and um, so I'm gonna bottle it, and then it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna have you know cases of wine in my garage that I can't drink for five years. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Wait. Uh, so we'll see. Anyways, great wine. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Nice. Check it out. As always, thirty seconds of craziness. Enjoy. I'm not real for you. No bread, cause we don't ration No mind, we can't decide All we have is luck and all we have is passion